program because Ramona Rizzo and I from VH1 Mob Wife had an emotional morning touring the wreckage of Staten Island. There she and I are. She is with me here in the studio tonight. Ramona, first of all, thank you for being a great tour guide. But here's what I want to say. I thought I understood what was going on there. But when you go into these communities and there's mile after mile after de of devastation, you walk into one home after another and hear these devastating stories. Ramona, I am overwhelmed. How did you react to today? I mean, I just kind of just left there just feeling helpless. I mean, overwhelmed at this point is probably just an understatement. But um, if one word that I had to describe you know, going into this and then finally leaving at the end of the day, it's just the word helpless. You know, I feel very helpless for these people. I wish I could do more for them. And really, what did we really do? We didn't even really begin to fight what we really need to get into. This is something that it's going to take a lot of time, which you saw with your own eyes. And that's something I want to get into throughout the show this evening, because this is not, uh, listen, people have been amazing in terms of pulling together and getting through these few days. But this is not something that's going to go away soon. There are thousands of people with nowhere to live. There is, people have been great with clothing. Clothing seems to be something that a lot of, most people have. But Abundance, the basements yeah. are still full of water. The, the temperatures are going to the freezing zone. And these things are going to freeze. The, the foundations are going to crack. The plumbing is going to be done. Uh, and where are they going to live? That's, there's no plan going forward. And you and I saw that clearly. Well, that was the main question. What's the next step? Everybody wanted to know, what do we do after this? You know, people are in shelters that are our schools and our high schools. Those high schools need to get back to regular day life. Where are these people going? There's not enough housing on Staten Island to make these people set up a normal life. You know, there's kids that need to be relocated to different schools. People, one of their main concerns, what you said was, um, how am I going to pay a rent and a mortgage on this house? You know, the mortgage company doesn't want to, you know, hear that, hey, about this hurricane at this point. They said, what was it, Dr. Drew? I'll give you three months, but when the three months is up, I need the past three months. So the lady's like, I can't get out of the circumstance. I can't win. You know, she was in tears on, in front of us. I didn't know what to do for her. It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. Well, we're going to we're going to look at some of that right now. And we were standing at this next footage you're going to see. We were standing outside of a house that really looked like it was Dorothy's house, like it had been picked up and moved. It had actually, Wizard a house had floated, yeah, the Wizard of Oz. It had floated off its foundation and was in the neighbor's yard. Their house was in the neighbor's yard. And this woman was a, up the street. This is the interior of so many houses. This was actually a house that was doing rather well. They'd whipped everything out. But there was a woman who was reliving her near-death experience. She ran up to us on the street. This is more what most interiors look like, what you're seeing there. But this woman came up to us on the street and just wanted somebody to hear her story. Watch this. What, what's going on? We lost our house. The water came so fast. Were you in this neighborhood? Right up the block. Did you evacuate? Were you here? We were here. We all got out last year because of Hurricane Irene. Yeah. And everybody came and robbed us all. So nobody left this year because we didn't want to get robbed. Did you lose anybody? Did you know Jimmy or? I knew Jimmy. He got blown right out of the back of his house. The guy next door saved us. If he didn't knock on my door, we'd all be dead. How'd you get out? I had overnight bags packed in the truck. And the kids were eating dinner. And he knocked on my door and he said, get out, the water's coming. How old um, the kids? 15, 14, and 11. And by the time we left the house, all we had to do was throw our coats on. The water was up to our knees. And I came down here. And the water came all the way up. I can't believe we got out. And it just chased us down the boulevard. Yes, uh, the, I heard, I'm, I'm going to see if we can get another story up that's just like that. This is a mom who took, got her kids out in a canoe. Remember that, Ramona? Do you guys have that, oh that video Thank available? Oh, my God, that $20 canoe. That's right. And they were improvising. The water went from their ankles to their neck, and they said, in a, a, a matter of a few moments, like two, three minutes, and the thinking that maybe the water was going to come, maybe they ought to get out of there. And now, all of a sudden, they are finding themselves with their two- and four-year-old, watching their neighbor with a six-month-old. Remember this, Ramona? Holding the six-month-old yeah, over his head while he was underwater.
I mean, this is the credible thing about this. The, there are just thousands of these stories. All the aerial views you see of Staten Island and New Jersey, you've got to understand people stayed behind because of fear of looting, because they didn't believe it was going to happen. A lot of them were, were elderly and didn't survive. Let's look at this quick story. This is very similar to the woman you just saw. And I looked out and the water started to rise. Right, right down the street here. It was about maybe to this, right here at this point. So I said to my husband, you know, and my mother, I said, I think it's time we have to leave. How old is your mother? How old is she? Yeah. She's 73. Okay. And I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. They said, oh, okay, you know, let's weed it out a little bit. Within minutes, it was like three-quarters of the, the fire hydrant. My sister lives across the street. I called my brother-in-law. They came. They, he found a boat or a canoe on the side of his neighbor's house. And that, I That's put the it. life jackets on the kids, and back then it was already up to my husband's like chest level. So you couldn't drive out. No. So my uncle and my cousin were running down. We were going up on the boat. They were they were coming to get us. In, in the middle of the storm. In the middle of the storm. We heard story after story like this. Let's talk to somebody in Staten Island right now. Charles, you're in Staten Island. What do you want to say? Yes, how you doing, Dr. Drew? I just want to say, with everything that's been going on, I actually seen it. I lived it. I've been it. I saw it all coming through my house. My biggest thing is I want to know is where is this mayor? Where is the mayor on Staten Island coming to see the, actually what's going on and how we're living? No electricity, no gas, no nothing, no heat. And he's nowhere to be found. And let me tell you something. The people are I, I hope he goes out there. I hope he hears you, Charles, because the, the people are ready to to respond to their leaders. If people are desperate for help, they want to be heard. We just saw story after story after story. I, I, Charles, problem, is your house Dr. one of the ones that was... Everybody wanted direction. Nobody well, doesn't know what the next plan. step is. They said, where is the help? The water's coming they're, in. They're, they're, and how it's coming in. What's that? I saw and my And Charles, where are you living out. now? I saw the water. Their world, we're living in a house. We have nowhere to go. So it's yeah. like we, gotta, we have no choice but to stay there. Okay? And what did you say and about your son? You saw your son what? My son's 10 years old. He went through a panic like you wouldn't believe when he says, Dad, the water keeps coming. And I had to try to calm him down, calm my wife down, calm my daughter down until this all blew through. And there was nobody around. And to this day, I know. we still have nothing. And, the storm, and there's another storm coming in on Wednesday. I know, Charles. That's why we're trying to tell this story tonight. We, we witnessed it. I, I see it. I, I feel your desperation. I, I must tell you, I, I've got a psychologist on this show late, later, and I frankly, I want him to help me because I feel guilty not being out there trying to me help then. you guys. It, it's a, the, yeah, uh, and, and Ramona, let's, let's, let's finish it up with you, Ramona. What do you want people to know about your home, your community? Before we go to break, we're gonna, we got lots more footage, a lot more wild stories, but what do you want people to know about what's going on now, what you guys need? I just think, honestly, everybody needs to know that this, how this community you know, really stood up for each other. Without this community all helping each other, I think there would have been so, so many more deaths. We were the ones out there feeding each other. We were the ones giving each other water, medical supplies. We were there before FEMA. We were there before the Blue Cross. You know, if it wasn't for the community, the government really would have a lot more to answer for. And that's what the people really want to know, Dr. Drew. What is the next step? They want direction. They want a leader to come forward. They want an answer. People are sleeping in cars. I mean, you witnessed all this. You heard it. It was heartbreaking. It happened. Now what is some type of form of structure. There's nothing there for these people. They're, they're broken. Right. You know, that poor like lady, that. she says, I never in my life, I worked hard. I paid my bills on time. I did everything proper. And here I am today. I'm looking through clothes for my children. You know, she says a very humbling experience, but in the same breath, how did we get here? W what's the solution? This is all they want. Well, they want to know, where's Ramona, the borough president? I know, I, What's the next step? But most importantly, hats off to the people of Staten Island. I'm sure I'm, we're focused on Staten Island because oh we God, were there amazing, today. But amazing. I, but but the, the way they pulled together, you'll see all the footage you'll see coming through. Perhaps you have some pictures that my wife took of the, the different, if you look, that says food and water that's and clothing and stuff. You'll see home, these. Yeah. Right, you'll see these tremendous outreaches that people were pulling together. If it were not for that, I, I don't want to, I want to shudder about what, what might have happened. And. Ramona and I are going to tell you a story that a rumor we heard about something also unbelievable. Uh, maybe the death toll a lot higher than people know. I don't can't substantiate this, but she's heard 